Hello and welcome to this video in which I am going to explain how to point count a sedimentary rock in thin section. Here's what you need. You need the thin sections you want to count, a polarization microscope with crosshairs, and a way to laterally move across the thin section in a defined and constant step length. For example, with a mechanical microscope stage or a motorized stage coupled with a computer. I have access to a model from Pelcon that is coupled with my computer. Let's assume we want to count this schematic part of a sand thin section. There are basically three or four methods we could apply when point counting. The first one is called the fleet method. Here you just count all the grains in the thin section. This is obviously the most accurate method, but it can take a lot of time if you consider that most thin sections contain thousands or ten thousands of grains. A variation of the fleet method is the so-called ribbon counting method. Here you count all grains that are contained within a small band, the ribbon, of the thin section. The width of this uh, ribbon depends on the grain size of the sample. Another method is the line counting method. Here you define several lines within your thin section. Then you move your thin section laterally, always using the same step length, and count the grain under the crosshairs. The chosen step length again depends on the grain size of your sample. This method can be susceptible to grain size bias because larger grains, like this one, can be counted multiple times, whereas smaller grains might not be counted at all. Some image analysis software, such as J Microvision, let you import a photo of the thin section and then create a random grid. Also, this method might introduce grain size bias because larger grains are more likely to be counted multiple times. If we compare the results from this example, we see that the point counting results scatter quite a bit in the ternary plot. From my experience, the ribbon counting method is a good compromise between accuracy and time spent. All right, so now you have an overview about the different techniques and you could start counting. There is, however, one last problem. What do we do with grains that consist of multiple minerals? Imagine your crosshairs land on this plutonic rock fragment, which is a composite of quartz, feldspar, and amphibole. Now, there are two schools that suggest two quite different ways to deal with such cases. The first one, the so-called Gazi Dickinson method, requires you to strictly count the mineral under the crosshairs, no matter if it belongs to a larger grain or not. There is a grain size limit to this approach, which is commonly set as 63 microns, the lower limit of the sand grain size. Therefore, all minerals that are larger than 63 microns will be counted as the type of mineral, which in this case is quartz. Minerals smaller than 63 microns that are part of a larger composite grain will be counted as the lithic fragment they belong to. The second method is sometimes called the folk or the Indiana method, with reference to the sedimentary petrologist at Indiana University that used this method. Here, every polymineral phase is considered a rock fragment and should be counted as such, no matter its grain size. Both of these methods are justified in a way. The advantage of the Gazi Dickinson method is that it's mostly independent from subsequent mechanical destruction of composite grains. So the petrology of sandstones of different grain sizes is more comparable. The advantage of the Indiana method is that it keeps the valuable provenance information provided by the different rock fragments, which are considered the most diagnostic components of most sandstones. Most sedimentary petrologists suggest a combination of the two methods in order to preserve all valuable information. Here's a real example. This is a grain consisting of quartz and feldspar. The scale here tells us that most of the individual minerals are well above our 63 micron limit, which means we have to count the individual mineral. In this case here, our crosshairs landed on the feldspar grain. So this belongs to the F pole. Here's another example. The crosshairs landed on this around 200 microns large grain. However, the individual minerals are smaller than the 63 micron threshold. 
In this case, we count the grain as a whole. This is a sedimentary or a psamitic lithic fragment and therefore belongs to the L pole.